Hi! In this video I'll talk about sewing buttonholes with a sewing machine. I'll try to demystify the different settings on a sewing machine, the attachments you can use, the advantages of a buttonhole presser foot, uh, how you open a buttonhole, whether to sew it horizontal or vertically, um, the shapes of different buttonholes and I'll give you some tips and tricks to get better results. A buttonhole is usually made up out of dense uh, rows of stitching. Um, you have two long ends, these are the beads, and at either end they are secured by a bar tack. Of course the size, placement and shape of your buttonhole completely depends on what button you're using, the size, the thickness, the shape and also the fabric. So buy your buttons first before you start sewing a buttonhole. This regular buttonhole is suitable for medium to heavyweight fabrics and is usually found on a regular sewing machine. If you're using stretch fabric, um, the long ends, the beads, are usually sewn more open with a wider zigzag and if your fabric is stretching both ways then also the bar text can be sewn in the other direction with a wider zigzag stitch. So the buttonhole will stretch along with the fabric. A buttonhole with one or two rounded edges is usually uh, used for more delicate fibers and fabrics like silk. Um, the, the round edges don't tear or alter the delicate fibers that much um, compared to the rectangular bar text. A keyhole buttonhole is used on medium to heavyweight fabrics and on coats for example and the keyhole allows like a thicker um, button to pass easily through the buttonhole and also the more thicker fabrics. And then you also have a bound uh, buttonhole which is different from the other types I talked about because the raw edges are not finished with dense stitching but they are finished with a, a piece of fabric. Um, I will not uh, go into detail on this type of buttonhole in this post but it's also used uh, more on coats and on high-end um, fashion. Buttons are measured according, are sized according to their diameter, um, but a buttonhole, for a buttonhole you need the diameter plus the thickness of a button. If you have a really thick shank button, uh, of the same size of a flat one, your buttonhole will be larger. Um, so in order to measure how large your buttonhole should be, you grab a little ruler and you measure the diameter plus the thickness and then add one eighth of an inch. Some uh, machines have a buttonhole attachment that also measures uh, the size of the button and the buttonhole. Um, be aware that they do not measure the thickness of the button. So if you have a really thick button always add a little extra length um, when sewing a buttonhole with that attachment. Most sewing machines have a buttonhole setting so you probably won't need to set the stitches because they are built in. But if you don't, uh, if you have a machine with not a lot of different options, you can just use a zigzag stitch and uh, dial down the stitch length. So the stitch width is how wide your, uh, the edges of your presser foot will be. And a, a very narrow stitch uh, length will make a satin stitch like you have in embroidery. Um, so the stitches will be very dense. And that's where you want to aim at. But always try on a scrap first if you don't have the settings and I would advise that for um, 
the other people too who have buttonhole uh, settings on their sewing machine. For the placement of a buttonhole, um, if you're following a pattern, I would suggest to just uh, follow the guidelines that are in the pattern um, to sew, to place the buttonholes horizontally, vertically and where exactly. Um, if you're not, um, then I can say that like on blouses and skirts, uh, shirts, I mean, the, the buttonholes are usually sewn horizontally except on the collar. Um, they put it very often vertically on cuffs as well um, and then on coats and jackets buttonholes are sewn more horizontally because horizontal buttonholes um, can uh, resist uh, more stress than vertical ones. So the industry is sewing the buttons on, uh, on blouses vertically because it goes faster and because it takes up less space. Um, and they can, a uh, vertical buttonhole is perfectly fine for a blouse or a shirt. Um, so if you have the choice, um, maybe, and you have the space on the garment, maybe a horizontal buttonhole is then better than a vertical one. But if there's not a lot of stress on your buttonholes, then a vertical one is perfectly fine too. Sewing machines have different types of automation when it comes to sewing buttonholes. If you have like a really automated uh, machine, a fully automated machine, um, chances are you have a one-step buttonhole setting, meaning that if you tell your machine what size of button you're using, um, it will just sew that buttonhole in one movement. Um, these kinds of machines often have like a little lever that you have to pull down and on the attachment there's this bracket that this lever will touch and then it knows uh, what size the buttonhole needs to be. If you have a machine with a four-step buttonhole setting, this means that your machine is less automated than the ones with a one-step setting, but you don't need to set the stitches manually or the direction, stitch width, stitch length. Um, you just have to change from one step to the next uh, for the different parts of the uh, buttonhole. So for the vertex and the two beads, that's why there are four steps. On some machines that have a four uh, step buttonhole setting, you need to mark the size of your buttonhole on your fabric in order to know when to change to the next step. And some uh, machines or buttonhole feet uh, help you with that. So like the Madame Sew buttonhole presser foot um, shows you actually um, when to um, take that next step. If you have no buttonhole setting on your sewing machine at all, um, just check if you have a zigzag stitch and if you can change the stitch length and the stitch width. If this is the case, you can sew beautifully made buttonholes by just changing the settings at every step. So you'll go through all these four steps and on every step you make sure that you have the stitches for the bar tag and then dense stitching for the two beads. If you're interested in buying a buttonhole attachment, first check if your machine has one that is specifically designed for the machine. Um, because that will give the most advantages when sewing a buttonhole. If you don't, there are, you also have to check if you have a one-step buttonhole setting or a four-step. And for a four-step setting, we have this universal uh, presser foot that is a snap-on uh, attachment and that will work on most low shank machines. So the advantage of using a buttonhole setting like this one is that you can set the size on the buttonhole foot uh, of the button so that this foot will know how big your um, buttonhole has to be. 
um, it because it's open here you can see clearly what you're doing uh, so it remembers the size so if you have to sew six identical buttonholes um, you just have to measure once um, there's no marking and measuring on the fabric because it shows you when to take that next step and there's a large cutout here on the back in order to let the dense stitching pass easily under the pressure foot. I also wrote a, a user manual specifically for this uh, buttonhole foot and it has, also has a YouTube video. So you can also check this out to have more information about this sewing uh, attachment. Just like with machine embroidery, um, a buttonhole has a lot of dense stitching um, so not all fabrics can handle this very well. A lot of them will curl up with the dense stitching and to avoid that I would advise you to always use some fusible interfacing to strengthen the fabric or an extra layer of cotton. A buttonhole also gets a lot of wear and tear so strengthening is always a good idea. And in order to sew uh, the buttonhole uh, easily and to let uh, the fabric pass smoothly underneath this dense stitching, some extra water soluble stabilizer is also a great idea. You can wash this away afterwards, so this won't replace the fusible interfacing, but is a little extra to get a more professional looking result. One of the best advices that I can give you is always test your buttonhole and preferably on the same kind of fabric and the same kind amount of layers that you will be using. Um, testing on a scrap is really important. You uh, also have to check whether your um, sewing machine setting will start moving forwards or backwards because different machines have different ways of sewing that buttonhole and even if there are four steps one machine can start moving forward and the other one backwards. So, test first. And then we're at opening the buttonhole, which can be done with uh, a seam ripper, of course. Um, if you use a seam ripper, um, if you're scared that you would rip open your buttonhole completely while doing this, Put a little pin at the end of one bar tag so you will bump into that pin before uh, ripping open the bar tag. Um, another way of cutting a buttonhole open is using precision scissors like these ones. And a third way that I know of is using a buttonhole cutter which is something that is also used in leather works so you can um, push open the buttonhole with this tool and you have a, either a wooden block or a little mat that comes with it to press it against. I hope you learned something new in this video about buttonholes and that you're more confident sewing them in the future. Have a nice day!